What is going on, everybody? It's Alex coming back here with another video. And today, Baroshma, we are going to be giving our people the gift of a lifetime. Three rounds, three different days. We're going to be doing another awesome mock draft. It's been a little while, and we finally got our big boards pretty much down. Going to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. We're going to give them the gift of ridicule. They're going to be able to yes. ridicule us endlessly. Yeah, I mean we we do we do a pretty good job. You did a better than Mel Kiper mock draft, so okay, that was you tongue know. in cheek, and someone took that way too literally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of took it literally, but I love Mel Kiper. He's so he's I a made beast. a shirt with his face on it. <laughs> I don't know how Mel Kiper is gonna like that. I don't know if you should sell that. It's gonna be like a copyright issue, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, needless to say, let's just keep going. Yeah, needless to say. I'm going to be taking the NFC teams today. Roshan is going to be taking AFC. I think that's pretty fair, given the fact that if we go alternating picks, then like it's a certain mess. teams, yeah, it's a big mess. So to keep drafting philosophy simple, AFC, Roshmo, NFC, me, also make sure that I do not have to deal with taking a pick at number two for the Texans. So without further ado, I'm going to kick this off. Yes, exactly that look. Um, we're going to kick it off with the Lions here, starting off at number one overall. And this is a pretty simple pick for me. Obviously, I always love to go for offensive line if I see a bona fide prospect, but this is the one team that doesn't need it because the, for no, not the Broncos, the Dolphins decided to pass on Penny Sewell and gave them right to you guys. And according to what we saw with Josh Uche and Liam Eikenberg, not the right decision. Still, there's another valuable position on the board on the, on the defensive front. It's edge. And we think that Trey Flowers is going to be cut. I think he has a $10.4 million dead cap that you guys can get rid of. And that is beautiful. KT, Kayvon Thibodeau, Oaks Christian alumni is an absolute stud. This past week, 22 pressures, or no, 11 pressures, 22 snaps. 50% pressure rate is absolutely unbelievable. This guy's the real deal. He has the juice to go all the way. Yeah, I already clicked on him like a minute ago, and I was like, eh, douche. Um, all right, so I got the Texans. I would have loved if we had uh, Thibodeau here, but uh, Thibodeau, Thibodeau, uh, KT. But uh, he does. We don't. And honestly, Evan Neal is a sexy choice. That's not who I'm going because I like the idea of like having Tunzel, having uh, Neal on the other side. But I'm going to forego that, and I'm going to go with another edge because, you know, it's it's a deep class, but, I yep. mean, you got to get the blue chip guys. And right now, you got Hutchinson, you got DeMarvin Lill, and then my one of my favorite guys, Kingsley and Nagbari. Uh, I think Nagbari is just a step below those other two. Uh, I love Hutchinson, but I do think the inter the upsides with uh, Leo, that's who I'm going to go with. I love his movement skills for a guy that's 290. He allows a lot of versatility. Um, I don't know how much versatility you really need in that basic uh, vanilla Lovey Smith defense, but it's nice to at least know you have it. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I love the pick. I do, because I think Leo could also be pretty dominant on the interior, exterior. He's can go everywhere, really athletic, and extreme upside. Huge fan of that pick. Oh, yeah. Jaguars, this one's easy. Uh, just let's go ahead, get Evan Neal, take yes. care of your uh, signal caller to their franchise, uh, Trevor Lawrence himself. But, I mean, Cam Robinson, franchise tag, he's gone. And then uh, yeah. uh, Juwan Taylor, man, he's a uh, – Juwan, Juwan, Juwan. They got Walker Little there too, so – Yep. A lot of options. Uh, Derek Steenley is going to be the next pick for me as well. Uh, foot injury, college, it's all nice. They don't really tell you. Uh, the details was on crutches this week. Hopefully it's not serious, serious. Don't think it will be. Most athletic corner in this draft. Uh, Jets, they need some more talent, depth at corner. I know. Bryce Hall, he's playing great. I wonder who really loved him a couple of years ago. Oh, I did. Uh, then you, you got... Uh, yeah, dude, dude was great. And then you got Michael uh, Carter in the slot. Get someone next to him because the guys that they've been putting at the corner two spot, they're really sub package guys, uh, equals yeah. and uh, Gidry. So yeah. there we go. We got Derek Steenley, and uh, now I can take a break until uh, wow, pick twelve. Hey yo, have fun. So 
Yeah, honestly, thinking about that, I would like look at Kyle Hamilton, but I think that if you look at the opportunity cost, you can potentially see that the Eagles as well as the Falcons are probably going to be looking at corner before your next one. So you're going at quarterback three versus pretty much, you know, cornerback, solidified cornerback one. Yeah, that corner is such a volatile position too. It's nice to have great depth there. And let's be honest about the safety position. It's a little devalued in the draft. Um, Mm -hmm. And I mean... (laughs) Like, Kyle Hampton, definitely worthy of a top 10 pick. You got Marcus May on the yep. franchise tag, probably, maybe, not going to resign. But, yeah, cornerback depth yeah. everything, man. Safeties, they impact the field, not as much as a good cornerback. So, Totally agree. But, speaking of safeties, we're not going to take one of this pick. Number five, the Giants. Say, they're loaded. Oh, yeah, no, they're <laughs> absolutely loaded. Yeah, no, they don't They don't need really much, anything in the secondary. I hope they actually start improving on their, their secondary actually performing as well as we think they could. Regardless, something that you usually want to get in the top five, something that Gettleman likes to get in the top five, is a monster on the line. This time, defensively, Aiden Hutchinson's been going absolutely off this year looking like a bosa level talent and that's somebody who i absolutely can see working on the new york giants here don't understand why wide receiver is listed as one of their needs it's not one aiden hutchinson brings that oomph. he brings that presence that honestly is going to be pretty damn awesome especially since the cowboys are starting to have such a lethal offense you need to have something that puts pressure on dak that stops zeke that is going to be the way you start winning the division win in the trenches yeah, I agree. I, I you, concur. Sorry, I'm on. Yeah, I'm taking I, vacation since I'm not here till. That's pick fine. I, t- <laughs> I saw you like lean a little bit towards your mic. I was like, oh boy, here we go. But the Eagles, I think y'all have been very excited to see how the draft board falls because I know Kyle Hamilton is a prime prospect. I if I were to have the Eagles sitting at number one overall, maybe I wouldn't take Kyle Hamilton, but. It would be KT and Kyle Hamilton as my favorite players for them to get in this draft just because of positional need. I love Kyle Hamilton to the squad. Pretty sure Anthony Harris is not going to re-sign. Kyle Hamilton has that ability to fill in there and play at an extremely high level. He's just a game changer at safety. I don't like many safeties to the level of which Kyle Hamilton is, but he's a game changer. He's a game breaker. So big fan of that pick. I see the nodding. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the, these top six guys are probably like they're all blue chips, so it's nothing really I, I to totally complain agree. about. Yeah, I totally and, agree. Uh, here. The Dolphins say you're welcome, Philly. That is true. Yeah, so Miami sends their regards. Uh, yeah, Kyle Hamilton, perfect fit, exactly what the Eagles need, and somebody who has the talent to be worth a top three pick. Number seven, still on the board with the Atlanta Falcons, and I think with a bunch of edges already off the board. I know for you, Broshmo, I'm pretty sure that you would at least consider Kingsley. I call him a nag bear, might be a nag bari. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it, but Me I'm either. sure that you would, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that you would consider him at this spot. I'm a little bit lower on him at that point, at this point, even though I do respect him, I think he does deserve that mid to um, later first round hype, which he's not getting. He's getting like mid to late second, which is disrespectful. Yeah, I mean, regardless, dude, uh, the draft yeah. network, they moved him from like 90 something to like, he's like, what, 43, 48 40, now? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, he's at 43. So I'm very happy about that because I've been a proponent for Kingsley to actually be up there, even though he wasn't one of my high edges. Regardless, I think cornerback is going to be the best value position. You need somebody to help out with AJ Terrell there. Kyrie Elam is the most dominant cornerback that is healthy right now in college. Um, <laughs> I mean, I just he's love actually Kyrie. he's missed the like last couple of games. That is, yeah, okay, maybe healthy enough to play some games this season. How about that? <laughs> so, Kyrie Elam, you look at his size, 6'2", 193. Maybe not the biggest guy in the world, but he fits perfectly what you're looking for. Really solid, being able to mirror guys. I would consider taking Sauce Gardner over him, but you cannot challenge SEC competition. Like, you you can't. Wrong, like, man. Sauce has been dominant versus AAC. Kyer, SEC, got to give the nod to him. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I think wrong, Elam's going to test much better, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Elam's going to be a lot more athletic. Sauce put on, like, another 20 pounds or something like that. He got up to, he got up to, like, 200, Yeah. if I'm not mistaken. He tried to put on some extra weight. So... Yeah, I think Kyrie Elam will also test a bit better. Number eight, though, still sitting on the board here with the Washington football team, which 
is granted they kind of need maybe like one free safety to be able to make it rock. Speaking of Marcus May, I think that would be a good destination for him. Like you're, you might be able to free up some cap from Landon Collins, um, be able to Such a bad use sign. that. Oh, I know. I, I saw that the the day that he got signed, I was like, oh, geez. But I think that might be actually a really good spot for Marcus May to go. I don't think a free safety is worth this pick right now, even though I'm a huge fan of Jalen Catalan, which y'all want to see guys like Jalen Catalan and I, I'm I'm not like what? Who else is here? Daxton Hill. There we go. I'm surprised yeah. he's higher. I like Jordan you guys, too. Yeah, either continue watching this or some of these guys might slip into the next round. I think that'd be a good spot for a guy like that to go. Quarterback is obviously a huge void right now. Taylor Heineke, he's not bad at all. He has his moments. He's just not a franchise quarterback that can actually lead you to something of actual value. So, uh, yeah, he can put up a good game here or there. I just think you need more consistency. Speaking of consistency, just kidding. There's a, that was a terrible transition. Malik Willis to me reminds me of Deshaun Watson when I watch him play. Legitimately, it could be the Liberty uniforms, but when I watch this guy play, when he has that play style of Deshaun Watson, who before all the external stuff was considered as one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, I think it's worth taking a shot on. I think he's really fun and it's just the best value for this pick. You're at number eight overall. Take a shot on a quarterback, Malik Willis, Liberty. Yeah. Just find out what his massage habits are. Yes, that might be good uh, discovery beforehand. So at number nine, the Eagles are back on the board. And um, I'd 100% look at an edge right here. Unfortunately, I just personally don't think anybody's worth this spot. I would look at somebody like Zach Harrison in the next round to be potentially somebody you stick on the interior, but just not really feeling a vibe on any of these dudes right at this moment, especially at number nine. I think that I'm going to be going towards the cornerback position. Steven Nelson, probably not going to return. And he was a great signing. I think somebody who could mirror that type of talent is Sauce Gardner uh, out of Cincinnati. I'm a huge fan of him. Again, consider taking him at seven over Kyrie Elam. He is just absolutely dominant. You see his impact on the field every time he plays. He has that game-changing presence on the field. And I'm a huge, huge fan of that. He's a good addition to Philly. Oh, yeah. I like it. I, I concur, dude. I'm I've been lost in the sauce for quite some time. He's so good. I've been a fan on of him since like the moment we were able to do a 2022 mock. It was just oh, he's he's way too good. Number ten though, back with the Giants. G- Giants, um, we're not able to do trades in this, are we? Just to keep it simple. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Why okay. would you? Why would let's, you do that? <laughs> let's keep it simple. <laughs> just to keep it simple, we won't do trades. Uh, a position of need for the Giants is both guard and tackle at the same time. So depending on your point of view of this player, he could be a guard or a tackle. For me, he's tackle too, but that's I do like, love I his was upside. Say, that's like three or four guys in yeah, this uh, yeah. first round. <laughs> oh, well, trust me. I know. You got Kem in here. You got Darian. You got Kenyon. Uh, there are a lot of dudes who can play both guard and tackle. I think Darian Kennard plays exactly what the Giants are looking for in terms of offensive linemen. He fits exactly what they've been drafting in the past. He's going to be the exact same for the future. He is not going to be a day one impact because he has been, he's had like only, only a couple of games where like Will Levis has been able to legit pass. So his pass protection is transformed exponentially from last year. Oh, yeah. Watch his tape. It's night and day. That doesn't mean that it is NFL ready. But the the upside is unbelievable. And you get the running game back. So I think Shane Lemieux is going to be replaced by Darian Kennard in the short term. But right tackle, I think that's where he fits a long term. I think this is an excellent fit and an excellent pick. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. Um, speaking of another pick that I'm going to love, number 11 to the Carolina Panthers. They need both a left tackle and a guard. And very similar to the New York Giants, there is somebody who fits that perfectly. There's a man who played one game at left tackle this year, and he played phenomenally against arguably one of the best defenses in college, Alabama. His name's Kenyon Green. So the PFF-wise, the guards have been probably worse than the tackles, whether that's Brady Christensen or Cameron Fleming. I think Kenyon Green has that upside to play that left tackle. I want to see him do it more often, but he's been able to show that he can play guard very well as, as well good and mobile a uh, mobile scheme he's a perfect fit so i'm taking him 
Okay. Yeah, I don't dispute it. I, I was kind of cringing. I was waiting to see here what which guy would go. Oh, it's either yeah, it's either a cam or a Kenyan. You can choose whatever one yeah. you want. Uh, both well, I'm, I'm well. trying to plot my path, you know. <laughs> I just love Kenyan Green to the squad. Yeah, honestly, Kenyan Poor Green was you could make a consideration to him to the Jets, uh, just because Lafleur is mm-hmm. you know outside block a zone blocking scheme. Um, yeah. With him off the board, I'm down to two prospects, right? Because mm. I don't think they need a tackle. All their problems have been Greg Van Roden and getting more consistency from uh, was it Connor McGovern there at um, center? I think so. Yeah, which yeah. he's kind of up and down, but for the most part, like and Elijah Vera Tucker's been playing a lot better. So, mm-hmm. uh, I was thinking receiver. I think Chris Olave Ooh. would be real. Uh, this isn't the pick. Okay, I'm just talking out loud. <laughs> I know. Just I just I was surprised by it. Chris. I think Chris Olave throw that dude on the outside. He could also play the slot. You got Elijah um, Elijah Moore. More. You <laughs> got your contested catch guy in. Corey Davis and obviously Denzel Mims isn't a part of the plan or future plans. Yeah. I think that would be a fun idea. But then I went back. I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and actually address the offensive line. <laughs> so I'm going with Tyler Linderbaum, dude. I think he's perfect yeah. for this scheme. Uh, yeah. You could kick McGovern over to right guard where Van Roden is. And yeah, I I think I'm going to roll with that. I'm gonna, I feel yeah. good. I feel okay. I don't blame you for it. I think it's a great fit. And even if he does, um, even if you want to keep McGovern at center, you can still play Linderbaum at guard. I think yeah. it's perfectly fine. I feel better about him at center, though. I don't know about guard in the yeah. NFL. But. I, he's, he has an extremely high IQ, and he's very mobile and very strong. Oh, I yeah. absolutely love Ty Linderbaum. I think he's a top five prospect for me in this class, honestly. I'd yeah. probably put him... Top I'd five? Put him what above the heck? Yeah, I'd put him above Derek Stingley. Dude, I thought I liked him when I had him at 10. Dude, he's a freaking beast. See, I love Tyler Underbaum. Th- there's, a, there's a lesson for you, kids. Doesn't matter how much you love a prospect, there's always someone that loves him more. <laughs> That's me. So, number 13, you got the Eagles back again. And if there were trades, I'd 100% trade this back with another team, either acquire a first next year or just go farther back so we can get a linebacker later in the first. That's not going to happen. So that kind of sucks. But regardless, we're going to stick to it. Quarterback is not something I'm going to go after. It's just, like, I've talked to a lot of Eagles fans, and they're just not ready for another situation where they have to get used to a new quarterback. Jalen Hurts is not exactly a problem. He might not be the solution, but he might not be the problem. So I love my boy Matt Crowell. Not going to be sending him there. I think Edge is a good position to start looking at. Um, this is a good spot for a guy like Carl Laftis if you really want him to. You want to push injuries aside, which, I mean, the Eagles are perfectly fine taking a dude who could be injury prone like Devontae Smith at 155 pounds. That could be the right spot. You could, of course, look at Kingsley. I know that that might be where you'd go if you went the edge route. I'm He's again, violent, not man. As, I'm all for violence. He is a beast. I do like Kingsley. And I'm very much considering him here. Uh, man, Carl Laftis is hard to choose against, though. He is 275 pounds. There are teams triple teaming this man in the Big Ten. Yeah, that is a sign. I like that it, it's a return to his freshman form. It's nice. Yeah. No, he is absolutely dominant. I think that he works on the Eagles, man. Because, again, you BG is going to be gone probably. You know, he got injured also on a contract year. Uh, Josh Sweat just got paid, but you're not going to stop taking an edge just because of Josh Sweat. And then Derek Barnett's going to be gone. Those are two departures that you need to replace, and Ryan Kerrigan's not getting any younger. I'm going to – I usually criticize this pick. I'm going to go Carl Laftis here. I think the upside is undeniable on a team that needs some extra youth and some extra upside. Yeah, I'm having a bit of difficulties right now with this Bengals pick. Uh, really? Okay. Yeah, because I like Akem a lot. Yeah, I was thinking that for you. I don't – know if i want to take another guy that might end up a guard yeah shut up no i'm gonna get to that i know i i think i know where you're going well no i was just thinking that um i it's usually a given pick for me because tyler lenderbaum is always here i Ah. love taking oh never mind okay so no i was not gonna make fun of you okay well you might (laughs) you might in a second (laughs) okay so like with like they they picked up uh jackson carmen 
You know, mm-hmm. a guy that oh, he used to play tackle, but now they're they're making him the guard there. Uh, I don't know if you want another guy that you hope works out at tackle and no, and ends up moving to guard. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna get a guy that uh, that ideally he's gonna work out at tackle because let's be fair, the offensive line needs address. Riley Reef, he's gone. Even though the play's been good, I hope they bring him back. I don't yeah. know if they will though. Um, secondary is always a possibility, like corner. Because mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, Trent McDuffie wouldn't be a bad addition to the secondary. Yeah, it's neither would like Andrew coverage Green. wise. Yeah, I think I think McDuffie might be a better fit scheme wise though. Yeah, I yeah, just but, I like upside. Yeah, I like I like Booth too. I like Booth too, but uh, McDuffie's that dude. <laughs> I don't know. I I think McDuffie's been a lot better this year than Booth. Booth's had a few rough patches last uh, last month. Yeah, but yeah, yes. Uh, I actually this is why I said shut up. Uh, I'm gonna go with Charles Cross. I'm not going to blame you on that. He's taking a big step up for me. Yeah, that Alabama game, the Alabama game, the faded Alabama game, uh, mm. dude was a monster. Uh, yeah. He's got the athletic upside. So let's just go ahead with it now. Because um, yep. really, tackle, I feel like you get to a certain point and it, this tackle class is already kind of a toss-up. Yeah, I was, I'm was. i surprised you didn't um, consider Nicholas petit Ferrari. Uh, he's he's a, he's a true right tackle. He's my next. He, uh, I think he plays better at left. He even, I think uh, I was reading a um, article. He feels way better, way more comfortable on the left side. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. But well, yeah, either you have to his. I know, I know, and I'm trying to talk myself out of quarterback because I really like a chem for this pick. I know you're looking at me like that. Dude, Dwayne Haskins, man, he's the future. He sucks. All right, I guess I'm taking Matt Corral. Thank God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, oh, dude, Dwayne Haskins. I don't even know if he's the actual backup on this team. And Mason Rudolph, sure as hell, ain't gonna be the future either. No uh, disrespect to Dwayne, but if you can't beat out a guy like Mason Rudolph, you sure as hell don't deserve <laughs> command of the Steelers. <laughs> Give some respect to my boy. Oh, uh, and this lines up actually a really. Really good pick for me. Uh, for the Patriots, I'm going to go with Garrett Wilson. I think he's a really good fit mm. for Mac Jones, a guy that can attack all levels, opposed to like Olave, who, yeah, he's a good route runner in his own right, but you yep. want ex- you want that guy to be like, he's a, he's got burners. You want him to be a true deep threat, and I feel like they yep. got a few of those already. So let's go. Let's get a guy that's, that, that's going to attack the intermediate. So Surprised you didn't go corner there. Um, I really think they're going to bring back J.C. Jackson. I think so, too, but they just lost Stephon Gilmore. Yeah, but they have... um, They paid all that money to Jalen Mills. I'm not going to say Jalen Mills. Oh, they have Jalen Mills. I know, I know, I know. I'm Believe me, I'm not... Uh, <laughs> they paid Jalen Mills. I'll just say that. They okay. could address... The, we could address this later. Let's let's just help yeah. Mac, Mac and Cheese right now. Okay. Um, the Broncos... I'm excited to see what you do here. Uh, I'm not like a lot of the NFL or the uh, draft community. I like Sam Howell. The guy's got a big arm. It's like, oh, he's not playing that well. Oh, dude, shut the heck up. He has nobody. Like Josh Downs, great, one person. Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <Yep. laughs> but Don't disrespect dude. my guy, Josh. Oh, I won't. He's a first rounder for me. Next uh, year. Next year? Dude, next yeah. year's class is going to be dope, dude, with, uh, what is it? Keishon, um Boutte, or Boutte, oh yeah, however you say his yeah, name. Boutte. Yeah, Boutte. Yeah, I hope it's Boutte. Boutte. I, I hope so. That's that. That's just a shirt waiting to happen. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go with Sam Corral, man. Uh, Sam Corral. Oh my gosh, I'm mixing the two. Sam Howe. That'd be um, great. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, he's like he. I think he's this that's cat so is learning to go through his progressions, not because. Mm-hmm. They're asking him to, but because no one's open. Like, this guy's doing it for his own survival. This isn't like a case yeah. with Spencer Rattler where it's like, I'm just looking for someone open. It's like, no, he knows what his receivers are doing. He knows where mm. his check downs are. It just mm. happens Downs is the only guy that's open. You yeah. know, he's not making yeah. turnover. Like, ever since the Virginia Tech game, he's not making these turnover-worthy plays. He's been very mm. good, like, with taking care of the football. I think there's something there. The guy's got a I love it. cannon for an arm. 
Yeah, Miami no, I'm Dolphins. I'm a huge, huge fan of that pick. You and I are two of the few who actually are still fans of Sam. Yeah, I know this, and honestly, okay. this is kind of where my first like first round ends with the quarterback class. I think like Strong's like kind of fringe. Yeah. Like I got mm-hmm. my reservation. I get scared that he's Jacob Eason. You know. Do you like, think Tanner McKee comes out though? Man, I really like. Hope do we so. consider him in this? Cause... I really hope so. I'm really high on Tanner McKee. But, I think he's great. But it's just such a small sample size that, like, he's yeah. literally going to have a Davis Mills sample size. That's the problem. Yeah. With so. better upside. Oh, way better upside, dude. And so. he's actually mobile. Not to say yeah. Mills is, is, isn't, is but, I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the Miami Dolphins, this is this one's actually incredibly tough. I, I'm, I'm really against just adding more youth to that line. It's not going to help Tua any like none it's not gonna help yeah him. like i agree so they need to add some veteran leadership there um holy moly dude there's like i i kind of i kind of want to consider linebacker here and okay. i th- think the fit for me would be oh i'm kind of also like receiver it's kind of sexy but i think the receiver i would what? take here would be drake dude are you serious we got waddle on what else we got a Will Fuller. Oh, Devontae. wait. He's hurt. <laughs> Listen, he had one good year, man. And he got a paid you, because you of giving it. You're giving up on him. You're yeah. giving up on him. Yeah. Because I've seen him for too long. Like, I like Parker, but he's the dude's not a number one. Waddle, he's a guy that likely you you can use in a variety of different ways. Like, I'm not going to lie. I kind of play around with Drake London at this pick. Because I think he's a good compliment. Another guy that could kick into the big slot. He's a good contested catch target. The thing with Tua is he has problems really... Um, well, first off, it's not like he's got elite arm strength. But... Uh, I am shocked that you're not going edge. Why would I go edge, dude? Well, we got... Uh, was it Egba? Igba? Manuel? Ogba? Ogba, like, thank Emmanuel you. Emmanuel is coming up for a contract, isn't he? Yeah, he's going to get paid. The dude's been really good for us. All right. We got Jalen Phillips. Like, all right. Defense not, is not the problem. Okay. Making me mad. <laughs> so this Just is saying. where I'm, I'm. I'm stuck between London, and uh, I really like London. The more I talk about it. Man, hey, go with your heart, man. You know this team a lot better than I do, so listening to you talk about it helps. Yeah, and dude, oh, London's just so good. He creates after the catch. Uh, the thing I, I was him. trying to get to earlier is Tua. He has trouble throwing guys open. He was mm. so he's so used to those big windows that they had in college. They had mainly at Alabama. That even like Ryan Fitzpatrick was mentioned was mentioning this it was a struggle with Tua that he doesn't necessarily. Like he he looks at these windows as too tight. He doesn't have the garage door windows he had back in college. Uh, a guy yeah. with London's like stinking catch radius. Oh, he's a great contested catcher. He can create after the yeah. I'm going London, dude. I talked myself out of it, out of what I was wow. initially gonna do. What were you initially going to do? Uh, Nakobe Dean. Mm. That's I, fair. He's yeah, young too. Really good like man that. coverage linebacker that can bring mm-hmm. the house and he plays the runway yeah. i don't care what people think about well who's the other cat we got baker right uh jerome baker is that it yeah jerome baker yeah yeah he ain't that good <laughs> yeah okay all right he's a good he's athlete board, he's dude. just he's a oh you the raiders Ooh. oh boy camping. what do we got here like okay linebackers kind of an interesting thought here because linebackers just they can't get it Great. right. I don't know why they're uh, – they don't really play um, – what was it? Nick, uh, the former Chicago linebacker. Kwiatkowski. Yeah, like uh, he played pretty well last year. I don't know why he doesn't get time. I guess it's like, hey, we paid Corey Littleton a lot. Go out yeah. there and perform, and he really hasn't. Yeah. So, like, I think Devin Lloyd is an interesting guy to think about here because I really think I he brings the pass rush. He's a sure tackler, sure run stuffer. The guy's good around the line of scrimmage. I think he's for a team that asks their linebackers to like drop into zone seventy percent of the time. He's that guy. Like you're not gonna want a guy like uh, like Nicobe Dean. I think he he's more fit to like cover your tight ends, your running backs out the backfield, even like throwing the mm-hmm. slot occasionally. 
Same yeah. with Christian Harris. I don't want that guy going, dropping back in zone. He doesn't know what mm-hmm. he's doing. Yeah. Uh, so Lloyd's, an, it, uh, for me, an interesting thought. I think you could also go with corner. Trent McDuffie is very interesting here for me. Just in case Casey Hayward. They, I think they need a lot more depth. We saw what happened with Mullins. Like, Hayward's on a one-year deal. We saw what happened when Mullins is down. Like, Amik Robertson. Throwing that guy to the outside at 5'8", poor guy. Like, he, he's a slot only in the NFL. And they yeah. threw him to the outside. And Mike Williams had just licked his chops, dude. I was watching that yeah. game, and I was like, man, so glad to have Mike Williams on my fantasy team. <laughs> but, true. Yeah, so Trent McDuffie, I think, is a real consideration as well. He's higher on my board. Uh, offensive line, obviously, you know, the biggest need. Um, and you know what? If Tom Cable is return, uh, like retained, I think Akem, I think Icky is actually the pick here now that I think about it. I'm glad that I mm. talked this out. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, dude, because what? Like Leatherwood, if, if they're – because they've been, I know, working them out at guard in practice. Oh. <laughs> so he they might kick Leatherwood back into guard because he's been struggling pretty bad at tackle. So you got Akem oh, at uh, – <laughs> right or worst, worst case scenario you know you got two banger guards well hopefully just, with all the wood so yeah i'm gonna true. go with the chem man and uh I, yeah i just that. completed the gauntlet and it's i'm not gonna lie it didn't go the way that i expected <laughs> dude that a chem pick threw me for a little bit of a loop i like it though i know i was I just i was gonna go trent mcduffie it's just i'm I, really I high i really think a chem might be a top 10 prospect when mm. we get to the draft well, his after his testing numbers, I wouldn't doubt exactly. it. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's gonna be a freak. But no, nah, that that's interesting. I'm happy that Leatherwood is. Well, I kind of <laughs> wish Leatherwood would prove me wrong. Like I, I, I wish that he was actually really good. But y'all, y'all knew my reaction. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you mean everybody's reaction? Yes. Well, in the NFL community, a lot of people had Leatherwood as their number one tackle. That's what RJ told me. It's just like, what the fuck. What like number one tackle about Penny and Rashawn? Like those guys I, need to get fired. I mean, for 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 those takes though, it's like yeah, like you gotta look at like okay, well, also I didn't really have Michael Carter, the Duke corner, on my board when he came off. I was like, wow, that's surprising, and now yeah. he's like banger in the slot, dude. Nate Hobbs, the yeah, uh, Nate Hobbs. Like so, I like Nate Hobbs though. I didn't really watch on, him. I couldn't really? tell you anything about him. I was shocked. Okay. I was like, I don't know who this yeah. dude is. Yeah. No, I like Nate Hobbs. No, but good. yeah, back to the board. Number 20, you got the Minnesota Vikings. And I think the two biggest positions of need are going to be safety as well as corner. Uh, I think corner is a better value right now, especially when looking at what you can get next round. And seeing the guys who fell, is Trent McDuffie or Andrew Booth? Uh, I I like to go with the upside. Which is fair. That, which is fair. No, I I, I don't yeah. disagree. Like a lot of people are gonna yeah. have these uh, corners ranked all kinds of different ways. We have a solidified top five yes. of corners. Choose them whichever way you want. You do you. I think Andrew Booth has the major upside. He was originally my number eleven player in the draft. Made some major progressions in IQ, but has had some rough patches. Trent McDuffie is better all around. Choose whichever one you want. I'm going to choose Andrew Booth because I love his athletic upside. This dude is probably the second most athletic corner in the draft next to Derek Singley. So that's who I'm going to go with. All right. Tennessee Titans. Um, Honestly, I could probably draft corner here and it would make sense. (laughs) Dude, they're so beat up. Barely. uh, Farley out for the year. Um, Mm -hmm. Was it Fulton's on IR? Chris Jackson went down twice in the Monday night game. Um, yeah, dude, they're on life support, but, uh, I'm not trying to put more rookies back there. So they just grab some reliable vets, Mm -hmm. uh, running the football is a big deal. I hear in Tennessee, I think they got someone by the name of Derek Henry back there. Who's pretty good. So Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you want to get, you know, make sure your, your line is like legit, but to be fair, like they might not be like. The, the, he might have one of the best run blocking lines in football. It's just pass protection's kind of been all over the place. Like Taylor yeah. Lewan hasn't been like really himself this year. Um, and now he got concussed. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Even Nate Davis has been struggling in pass yeah. pro. Uh, how do I feel about? Uh, well, I don't really have any Dude, interior I thought, guys, but I what? thought this was gonna be an easy pick, man. Well, yeah, I kind of know who I'm gonna get, but uh, I, I, you know what, I like to like stretch out. I don't know who do you who do you think I'm going with? Nicobe Dean. Yeah, the that's actually who I'm course, going with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the linebacking core is ass. <laughs> like they're okay. going to sugarcoat it. Jayon Brown, he's on a one year deal, but okay. right now he's banged up. Uh uh yeah. Evans is trash. Over. So Yeah. No, I was referencing more Evan. Yeah. Like Rashawn Evans. Evans. Yeah. Which Nicobe Dean is a perfect replacement for. He is. And they're so. I think they're moving more back to like the like man coverage, heavy man coverage. Which actually mm-hmm. was kind of detrimental when uh like borders came in last night for Chris Jackson. Jackson's not even yeah. like ugh, yeah so yeah yeah no i i love that nicobe dean fit i was like what the hell like what are you why are you trying to talk about all these other random ass positions like <laughs> like shoot sorry nicobe dean I'm is a, that I'm a, dude i'm a man that likes his foreplay <laughs> oh my god um and, <laughs> and number 22 i think that Jameis has never been the problem in new orleans Nah. Receivers have been the problem in New Orleans. Oh, dude, have... I, I set you up perfect for this pick. Oh, I there is Chris with. Olave on the board. And something that Drew Brees said is that they do not have the ability to stretch the field back when he was quarterback. They don't still because they don't have a deep threat that's actually good. Chris Olave, excellent separator, as well as a really good deep threat. He is a perfect fit, no doubt about it. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Um, Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, I think this could be a fun spot for like a Traylon uh, Burks, depending on what they do with Mike Williams. But again, yeah. depending on what they do with Mike Williams, that's kind of situational. Uh, there's the tackle spot. Like Storm Norton's been pretty bad. Yeah, but. Mm. You know what? I'm gonna. I've been. I've been mocking this guy to the Chargers for like it feels like forever. Uh, and as much as I love Kingsley and Agbari, I actually prefer Drake Jackson for this pick. Okay. Uh, typical nine wide guy, dude. Great movement yeah. skills. Guy you can get real creative with. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh man, Browns. This one's tough too. Do they keep Clowney? I imagine they do, dude. He's been so effective for them. Uh, yeah. I guess it really depends what his asking price is. So this could that be too. another spot for Kingsley and Negbari. <sighs> man, is there a chance that there's a quarterback taken at this spot? Yeah, I just did that. Keith Sanchez. Uh, <laughs> mock the mock. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. uh, I I think Baker's back along for the ride one more like one more year. Okay. So like, I mean, why Tanner why McKee? am I why am I gonna ugh, Tanner McGee? Yeah, in twenty twenty three. Yeah. So this is what I'm down to. It's an Egbari or Jordan Davis. I was literally just highlighting Jordan Davis's name on my screen. Yeah, were so. you? Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I was thinking, I'm, man, they can really get some beef in the middle you know yeah i i, I personally would go jordan davis here but god i mean it's just, the fan it really depends on me really wants an egg burry yeah let's go jordan davis i'm gonna go with yeah. the beef uh the dude's really good man and he's playing mm-hmm. alongside a extremely talented defensive line yeah no that that's a that's a pretty damn good pick when you're the Browns, you just want to continue solidifying pieces. Jordan Davis is arguably the best interior defensive lineman in the class if you do not consider the Marvin Leal as one. So it's good value. I like it. Oh, Number 25. Fun. You're welcome. Uh, you got you got the cheese heads. And this is a spot where I mean I could I would love just to have gone to Kobe Dean here. I just don't think the linebacking core is that good, even with Jalen Smith potentially coming back, which I don't think he will. I think he's there for the ride with Aaron Rodgers and see what happens. Offensive line has been a little bit brutal, though. Would you agree? Yes. They are going to get some guys back, though. I mean, the right side of the line is not great. 
Like, even with at full strength, I don't think it's that great. What don't they have like do they have Dennis Kelly at right tackle for some reason? It's like popping in my head. Uh who do they have at right tackle? I don't know if he started, but they do have him on the roster. I do know that. Okay. So yeah, because I just did my Packers seven round mock, so I just it's escaping me. I think that going tackle wouldn't be a terrible idea here. You need to protect um you need to protect your asset in Jordan Love because it's gonna oh. be a little bit rough starting out. Uh, but this is another spot. Would you consider Kingsley and Nagbury here? Or Nagbear? Yeah, because I really think Zadarius is gone and so is Preston. I think Smith brothers are gone. That's all I need to hear. Um, I mean, I just don't think the tackle value is good enough right now. So I'm going to go Kingsley and Nagbear. Going to solidify or attempt to re-solidify the defensive front. Oh, yeah. yeah dude. It's, Honestly, it's that's, that's a scary duo, dude. It's I know. Like, Gary, man, he's, he's coming on now. Ooh. Yeah, well, last year he was, but still a lot faster than I I anticipated. I thought he was more of a project. Definitely, yeah. I, I think that that'd be a really good duo. Can at least patch um, the wound that was just opened up by Rogers, pretty much taking the rest of the roster with him. Twenty six Cowboys. Randy Gregory is going off right now. By the way, did you see that pit he did against Mac Jones? He went around the tackle and hit him at full speed. I was. Mwah. That was beautiful. I don't know how I, they're going to afford him, but I know they, they will. I because You really think they will? Yeah, cap space isn't real anymore. Didn't you see what the Saints did? Yeah. I don't believe in cap space anymore. Because I believe Adam Anderson would be a really good selection here. He would be just if to replace you're him. not going to re-sign Gregory. And I don't know why you wouldn't at this point. <sighs> yeah. Looking at the other positions of need... You could look in the safety room just because there are a lot of dudes who are one-year contracts. Yeah. And so Kazi guys like Jalen just had a DWI. Who? Uh, Kazi. The oh, uh, Demonte Casey. Yeah. Is it Casey? Like, I've never. Yeah, oh, that sucks. Yeah, I was Demonte such a fanboy for him too. No, he's really good. So hopefully he did not actually get a DUI. That would suck. Regardless, a guy like Jalen Catalan would be a really good addition here. Jordan Battle is. I don't know why he's at number 32. He's lighting it up. If you want something more on the strong side, uh, he's a freak. But yeah, he is. Uh, I mean, I just can't go Daxton Hill. I think he's similar to Tyke Smith. It's more of a slot guy. Would you agree? I think that's just because how Michigan's playing him, dude. I don't know why he's exclusively mm -hmm. playing in the slot this year. I think he's yeah. got some real movement skills. So I'm a bit indifferent about it, but it's enough for okay. me not to really <sighs> – like, I don't know. It's enough for me to, like, scare me out of the first round talk with him unless, like, I'm a okay. team with sniffing and depth. To be fair, we're kind of getting to those teams that do have good depth. So Yeah. Honestly, this is just to pick best guy available for, um, like, a general position of need. I think Jalen Catalan might be the best choice here. He's a guy with an extreme upside. You can potentially bring back DeMonte Casey. You have safeties that are there on one and two year contracts. So there's vacancies as well as guys who are veterans that can help. He is a missile. He is willing to play in the run game. I think that he's one of my favorite players in the draft. Even if he makes a mistake here or there, I think that he's worth it. And that's why I'm going to take him. Sounds good to me, man. I like him. And I saw how the board just fell. Number 27, uh, the Cardinals... They don't need a cornerback desperately, right? They they even got they're willing to trade him away, right? Even uh, for Zach Ertz trading away what Tay Gallon? Yeah, yeah. It was like a so Tay Gallon in a fifth, I think. Yeah, Tay Gallon in a fifth. I would look at Trent McDuffie still, guys. I really would. You can't harp on the fact that Alford did a pretty good job, and like the guys that you have, Marco Wilson doing well. You can't imagine that two corners or three corners can consistently do it year in and year out when they're not actually top talents like history repeats itself over time and those guys are you know they slip for a reason or they go to a uh, free agency for a reason edge is another position i'd look at though there's still my Jai sanders on the board uh, i know that there is still a vacancy in that edge room chandler jones might not be returning i know they requested for a trade last year I would look at my shy. I'd look at Adam Anderson as a fun guy to be that. Who is the guy Hassan Reddick? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
if you think uh, that J.J. Watt's not going to last, Zach Harrison, one of the biggest risers, Nick Benito, there's a really good argument for edge here. I think the best value, you guys are going to kill me, is corner, though. What, who would you take in this position? Because I'm looking at Trent McDuffie. Man, I said this about Byron, uh, Byron Murphy, that I hate yeah. him as a scheme fit. Took him three, like really three years to really get uh, up where he should be. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Trent McDuffie, though, is a much better prospect. Much just, better. It's great value. I don't disagree. Um, I'm going to go edge, dude. I'm going to go edge. All right, fine. Screw what I have to say. Yeah. I <laughs> know. Uh, like, I really like Trent McDuffie, but I just don't think the Cardinals are going to target that first round. I think they're yeah, going to want to get a, a guy draft. like draft. You don't necessarily have to. For the corner position, I think it's a good draft, so you don't necessarily have to. I just think there's a big drop-off after McDuffie, but it gets better later on, I which is where they feast. feel like there's two guys right now that are like – they're in that first round area. There's just a few question marks with them. Mikhail Wright and um, and uh, nope. I hate Jordan? Mikhail Wright. No, what? I don't hate him personally, but I'm not a big fan. Damn. Dude, dude has been lit up. Stanford allowed two touchdowns. Uh, got caught I mean, sleeping in the Ohio State game. He did mess up in the Ohio State game, but this guy has skin tight coverage. You actually get him to He's be also more skin diligent. Tight small. That is true. Yeah, that's true. And to be fair, the but, guys that I actually like actually have a bit more size. So. <laughs> so I would say Darian Kendrick is probably a dude you're looking at, and maybe Roger McCurry. Yep. Yeah, Roger McCurry is good. He um, is. Yeah, he's good. I just he's my only round two corner. Besides only Mikhail round Wright. two. Yeah, Mikhail Wright and Roger McCurry because I have Darian Kendrick as a French first. Oh man, well I like Martin Emerson a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would have him as like a late, like an early third. It's yeah, not, it's I, not mean, like, I, I do it's, feel better yeah. about him in the later. Yeah. Like I, Regardless, I this pick is going to be my Jai Sanders. Uh, he's been going off. Okay. <laughs> he's really good. I was, well, I was just going to say, I was like, okay, wow. Forgot we were still on the Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to go my Jai here. I think he has the most upside, and he's a good schematic fit. He's a good Chandler Jones replacement in the long run. You need some extra edge presence. You got it with my Jai. Yep, yep. Now I got the uh, daunting task of what to do with the Baltimore Ravens without a chem on the board. Uh, yeah. I'm. He's never. He's not. I don't think he's gonna sniff anywhere in this area when it comes draft time. I mean, I don't. I don't blame you after how I've seen him progress. I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, getting maybe depth at the corner position. I mean. Yeah. I mean, I don't. McDuffie, if McDuffie ain't a fit for the Cardinals, he definitely ain't a fit for the Ravens. Yeah. Uh, so I'm probably going safety, honestly, because they mm. do love their safeties. They love their sub packages. Yeah. Um, I think I'll go with the more physical safety when being Jordan Battle. Also, a good man coverage safety, a guy that can play around the line of scrimmage. Um, he's kind of a headhunter. Uh, yeah. well, not really a headhunter. He likes to hit low, but. Uh, he's really good. Yeah, he's really um, good. I think uh, you could get real creative with him. So, yeah, let's go. Fair. Let's go with that. I would not like that solely because, as a Steelers fan, it would be very irritating to see Jordan Battle, who I think is a monster, on the field two times a, a year against us. Mm. But yeah, no, it would suck. Number twenty nine, you got the Lions on the board, and they've been gifted something very nice. Trent McDuffie. Thank they goodness, dude. Go. I'm not going to lie. I was sitting there with the Chiefs, and I was like, I can't pass on McDuffie, man. Like, yeah. Our yeah, scheme's no, not that good anyway, so <laughs> let's blow I think it up. Mc, yeah, McDuffie could have went at 27. McDuffie, I was thinking about taking him at 26 with the uh, – with the not the Chiefs, the Cowboys. Uh, I mean, hell, he could have went number 22 with the Saints. Like, there's, just a, there's a lot of points where he could have went, and he just didn't. Yeah. It's not because he deserved to not go. It's just the way it fell. Oh, man, this is a Already? bit of a predicament I am currently in. You uh, want to go the I, TDN route and just pick uh, Jahan Dotson? I guess if I hate my defense, right? Uh, no, I man, I, I, I corner, definitely, it's there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Roger McCreary or Kendrick. I'd probably lean McCreary if I had to go really? corner. 
Well, just because the, the character concerns are legit, I think, with uh, Kendrick. There's just a lot of questions that need answered they right now. They brought on Baker after a robbery. I'm... <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude. Okay, but still, I'm not going to justify, you know, picking this cat right now. I think in the second round, there's a lot less on the line. I'm not trying to Isaiah Wilson myself with this pick. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the last thing I need, dude. Just go on TikTok and there's just Darion Kendrick just on top of a car, waving a gun, dancing. Looking like he's Jackson Mahomes. Oh my. <laughs> dude. Um, I think safety actually. I was I was trying to talk Ooh. myself into one of the edge yeah, guys, but like um, honestly, it, it actually would work really. It would well. it would have to be a spag guy, right? Yeah, well, like, that's it, what I was looking at. Um, Harrison. Yeah, but I don't think he's first rounder. Like for me, a lot of the shines come off. I know I typically was quicker to defend this guy mm -hmm. than you were. I don't know if the roles are reversed. I just I feel better about someone this unpolished in an edge class this good in this on day two. That's fair. So um this is kind of tough, but I think I'm gonna go with um uh safety. I'm gonna go I with like safety. It. I'm gonna I'm I'm actually gonna go with Daxon Hill. Yeah. Uh I was trying to talk myself into Brisker. Because mm -hmm. I, I do like Brisker a lot, but there are some limitations yeah. with what he can do. And that's the thing with the Chiefs. I need a guy that doesn't have those movement skill limitations. Not to say Brisker's bad sure. by any means. It's just, you know, I'd rather take the guy that I that I know can cover a lot of ground if I say, hey, you're my center fielder, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, so, yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, sitting here at number 31, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is a tough one because I'm also thinking about going safety here because I think going secondary is a good idea. So you can look at corner. You know, I still think Darian Kendrick is a really good fit. I also see Brandon Joseph as a guy with an extreme upside where I had him as my number six player in the draft. So choose your pick your poison i think they throughout their draft philosophy besides randomly getting uh who's the cat out of florida that they got i'm bugging on his name right now kyle trask besides that oh. they've been taking shots on dudes with some pretty like, high ceiling what's safety out of florida <laughs> they <get. laughs> um but you look Davis at tryon the team <laughs> no like yeah um if you look at joe tryon somebody with an extremely high ceiling very unpolished uh, you look at even in their fourth round they got Jalen Darden, somebody with a very high ceiling out of North Texas. I think Brandon Joseph has that same ceiling, and he fits exactly what they'd probably be looking for, more of a roaming free safety. But you can adjust him to whatever you want. That's where I'm going, Brandon Joseph. Okay. Okay, I see you. We're going, we're going to run on safeties here, man. Yeah, I know. Uh, Shoot. And I'm not going to lie, like, Brisker's kind of a fun fit for Buffalo, but it's not what they need. <laughs> Uh, Devin Lloyd's sitting here. I think he's perfect for this scheme. Tremaine Edmonds is... He's a good athlete, but what more does he yeah. do? You know? Give sure. me Lloyd, a guy that can clog path, uh, passing lanes with his length. He's got enough uh, explosiveness to get to the flats if you need him to. And guess what? The sure. man can blitz. The man can run stuff. Yeah, I'll take me uh, some Devin Lloyd, please. I see that you're drafting the retirement home at the end of the first. <laughs> he's a redshirt senior. Hey, but, dude, I'm okay yeah. with that. It means he's ready yeah. to play. That's fair. But Shoot, for you guys watching... Seven, isn't there a seventh-year edge uh, out of uh, Colorado oh State? God. Yeah, there is. <laughs> God, that's so terrible. Regardless, that's going to be the end of the first round. So for y'all watching, thank you guys so much for coming in. Tune in tomorrow for round two, and we'll see y'all later. Golly, this was interesting. Catch you on the flip side. It's not my ending phrase, but uh, it's what came out. <laughs>